governments have lied to us for over 50 years yes. about the effects of marijuana. Yes. So really there's a significant number of Canadians that do not trust the government on this issue. What do you propose to do to gain the trust of Canadians? I think the best way to engender trust is to tell the truth. And, and the best way to know the truth is to rely on evidence, rely on, on, on science, rely on those who have done the research and provide us with the facts and, and to make sure that the information that we put out is well researched, well defended and documented, and, and so that we can reassure Canadians that the information that they're receiving from their government is the truth. I think, I think that's the best way to engender trust, is, is to be open, transparent, act in the, in the public interest, and to tell the truth. Will the Bill Blair Task Force give MNPR applicants a full voice in both the consultation and reporting process? Yes. And, and I thank you for the opportunity as a point of clarification. It is not the Bill Blair Task Force. <laughs> <laughs> My responsibility as Permanent Secretary of the Minister of Justice is to assist her in the fulfillment of her mandate. The Minister of Justice will be responsible for uh, the formation and, and the tasking of this particular task force, um, and my responsibility is to liaison with it. My expectation of that task force, of course, as will be determined by the Minister, will that it will consult very broadly and with the provinces and the territories and with Canadians across this country who have, you know, the, the, the stakeholders in this issue are vast and significant, and we intend to work very hard to hear all of those voices. As a young person, uh, meetings like this reinforces my faith in uh, Canadian democracy. Um, but my question is specifically for Mr. Blair, and I'd also like Mr. Oscapella's and Dr. Fisher's opinion on this. Will the Harper government's marijuana for medical purposes regulations, with its strict quality assurance, security clearances, and mechanisms to control diversion, be used as a regulatory framework for the production of cannabis in the recreational market? If so, what changes in the regulations should be made for the uh, commercial market? Also, a very quick follow-up for Mr. Blair. Uh, with the current majority of the Liberals have, will legalization legislation be passed before the next election, yes or no? Thank you. In answer to your second question, my soothsaying abilities are somewhat limited, so I'm not going to speculate on that. I've told you what uh, the, the platform and the position of my government is, and we're working hard towards that. Um, it is up to Parliament to make that determination, and we'll leave it in their capable hands. Um, on, on, on your first point, yeah. be, be clear here. Um, first of all, the MMPR regulations, um, have been, are, they're quite comprehensive. And in my experience, they have proven effective in achieving the government's aim in, in uh, pr producing a, a, a product which adheres to good production practices and good manufacturing practices. Um, and there, there has been some very positive experience from the MMPR regulations. I would not speculate, but I think there, there's a great deal to be learned from that experience. The task force recommendation, the task force will be looking very specifically at that, uh, among many other things. I don't want to get too far ahead of them in, in, in their important work, uh, but the government will continue to look at the, the, that, those regulations and how they're used and to see what can be learned uh, as we go forward in, in designing another frame. Basically echoing these comments, I mean the, the policy and lawmakers will not get around finding meaningful integration of those two systems because they're not separate entities on you know, neither side of the system both in terms of the producers, uh, the, 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 the providers, uh, but also the users. So there has to be meaningful and coherent integration of those two systems for, for things to work and not to produce the kinds of counterproductive uh, interactions that we've seen in some of the U.S. states. Uh, so, so integration needs to happen. The devil's in the detail for that, but that's all to be sorted out. Hello, thanks for holding this meeting. I'm just curious, with other cities starting to regulate dispensaries within their municipality, is this going to be allowed once legalization comes through? Are you going to tell the cities to give the money back and shut the dispensaries down? Give the money back. Well, $30,000 is a huge fee for Vancouver dispensaries to pay. So just curious. Okay, thank you.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I, I'm sorry, first of all, I don't have the answer to that, I'm, and I don't want to speculate on, on the outcome of these regulations. Uh, there is discussion to, to the, that will be taking place on these and many other issues on the appropriate regulatory framework and how the, that distribution will be established. I, I don't want to get ahead of those discussions, and, and so I don't have a definitive answer to the question. You know, with drugs, it's Health Canada or uh, Food and Drug that have done a lot of uh, testing and, and, and evidence-based uh, research. But this is coming up on the de demand side now. What I would like to know is consumers are very interested in reading even labels of soup cans. So when you um, buy or, or, or you know, get the marijuana, will there be the product product monographs that you get now when you get a, a drug to the drugstore? You know, even if you pick up something, you get seven or eight pages of information. If you pick up a drug, you get seven or eight pages of information. Doctors get maybe 10 or 20 pages of information. So will there be the same product monographs? It comes in dispensaries and sometimes in languages. Is is there is no way to know the quality, the purity, the risks of what you're ingesting, and and we I think we can do better. We can't do that under a prohibition model. We can provide those assurances of of, of greater safety uh, through strict regulation, particularly a regulatory framework which is based on on, on public health. Framework. At the same time, we also need to realize uh, there are problems. Uh, that develop with some people, uh, about one in ten users develop dependence. We do not have a terribly good realm or range of treatment options in this country at this point, so that's one of the pillars that needs to be developed for an overall public health approach uh, to cannabis in order to intervene effectively with the potential problems uh, we, we will likely be seeing. We need to eliminate the monopoly of the black market over distribution. Obviously a lot of the harms that were mentioned uh, by, uh, by Bill Blair uh, relate to the violence, relate to the status of illegality of the drug and the fact that the entire production distribution is, is currently controlled by black market elements. In order to change and improve that situation, we need to bring the distribution and the production of this drug into a legal realm as well in order to, to control that aspect. Uh, it would be naive to believe organized crime will not attempt to infiltrate any available segment associated to the production, cultivation, and the sale of marijuana. So we believe that a strong regulatory framework must be developed. We're not saying a criminal framework, but we're saying there has to be some type of framework to make sure that the uh, black market doesn't enter into uh, the sale of marijuana and doesn't get into the hands of youth. We would suggest only approved, licensed, and inspected producers be allowed to supply the market. This reduces the possibility of infiltration of organized crime. It also ensures the quality and the levels of the product being sold. <coughs> In issue of suppliers, we suggest that uh, regulations be required to strictly limit criminal abuses and maintain the integrity of a tax regime. Regulations will be required stipulating who can sell, who can purchase marijuana. And we suggest a form of government approved and licensed retail stores be established. This once again reduces the enticement of organized crime and ensures the sale of a quality inspected product. It also reduces the sale of marijuana to youth. The laws that currently exist in this country are in, in, in force and in fact. And it, it's important that those laws continue to be upheld, obeyed, and enforced while we do the important work of ensuring that we do the research and the, and the consultation that will bring about an appropriate and effective legislative framework to, to regulate and to, to, to achieve our goals of keeping our kids safe, making our neighborhoods safe, getting organized crime out of this business, and fulfilling our responsibilities to reduce the social and health harms of marijuana use. I think there is one point that uh, 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 that keeps coming forward, and that is the importance of, uh, of, of progress on this. And we talked about the Senate report of uh, 14 years ago, and I, I, uh, Mr. Jones from, uh, uh, from Normal asked a question and uh, had a chance to speak to my friend Andy Raybach, who had his job as executive director of Normal 40 years ago. 
and dealing with the, the same issues and asking for progress and, uh, and attention on this, uh, on this social issue. There is one, one development that hasn't been mentioned, and, and I'm not asking you to anticipate, but we're, we're expecting a court ruling from BC uh, Superior Court today on the issue of uh, possession and whether that, uh, it, under the existing law, is, uh, is something that is permitted. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we won't see uh, the use of this decision uh, uh, as a, another excuse for delay, but rather an opportunity to build on it. <coughs> Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it that way because we don't know the outcome of the of the decision. But we've seen so much in the past, appeal after appeal after appeal, as an excuse for delay on, on action. Thank you, Thank you Chair. <laughs> just, I just want to uh, make a couple of points. The critical issue here is having scientific evidence to back up what we're going to do. And I have some experience in that with insight in the supervised injection facility. If it's not peer reviewed, uh, I have difficulty accepting it. And we have all kinds of information out there that's not peer reviewed and comes from wherever. So the first thing I would say is that we have to have that scientific evidence. We continue talking about lack of research and information. Well, the reason we have lack of information is because it's illegal. Exactly. That's, that's the problem. If, if, and other drugs have been studied, but for some reason with marijuana, people won't go near it. And so we need to really get after the, get after the, the government to fund and to set up research centers. Some of them are being set up now, but I'm always leery of those that are being set up by corporations that are already involved in the business. Mm -hmm. I, I really have difficulty with that. The last thing I have is the amnesty. And I know that it doesn't seem to make any sense that we're moving towards legalization at the same time we're first enforcing the law. But I would say to you that that happens every day. We're always moving towards <coughs> legislation which is going to affect what goes on before. And so my suggestion is that we don't have an amnesty until after this bill is passed and it becomes legal. And then we sit down and we discuss amnesty for those people who've been charged with possession of marijuana. I think this is the start of a long process. I think it's a great start. Just take a look at the number of people that have come out here today. This is an issue that Canadians want to address. And I want to thank all of the witnesses for coming today. And uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of you uh, as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Campbell. You, you wrapped it up very well. Thank you for, for your thoughtful comments. Merci beaucoup à vous tous. Future will rely on